Good afternoon, everyone, this video. Today we have a spade review on the BF2C1 Goshawk. Now, before I begin, we have in the description a link to, well, I should say that, a timestamp that will link to the spade table of this aircraft. It's not very long, so don't expect it to be. You can also just skip ahead straight to the gameplay if you wish, or you can just sit here and listen to me describe the differences between this and the one in the Chinese tree on the name Hawk 3, because they are of the same family of aircraft. It's just the Hawk 3 is a slightly later model. One last thing before anyone does skip ahead, there is a slight thing that I need to clarify because some people might be a bit confused. You do not need to worry about the P26s that are no longer considered reserves. If you're a new player, you can research these completely for free and you do not need them to unlock the P400. If you're a player that's been playing before the BF2C1 Goshawk became a thing, you do not need to research these at all, they just remain here but are no longer considered reserves. I hope that clears up anything that people might be a bit confused about. It's not the first time we've had a reserve aircraft be changed. We had the BA-65 in Italy be changed to a 1.3 aircraft. So I'm just explaining that in case anyone gets confused. Anyway, without further ado, let's get into the BF-2C1 Goshawk. So the US Tech Tree 1 is a earlier variant. And there are a few changes to that, which we're going to have to talk about because a couple of things are for the better, like the weight and the fact that this plane, I I think it actually looks better with the earlier cowling, but the earlier cowling because of the engine does obviously affect it in terms of its survivability, but we'll cover that in a moment. So first of all, let's talk about the engine of the BF2C1 at Goshawk. So this is the right cyclone R182004. This is a 9-cylinder radium with 650 horsepower, which is acceptable. It keeps it pretty well aloft, and it can handle itself in dogfights quite well. I've been able to beat most biplanes I've come across other than I-15s, which just seem to be an arm and leg to take care of. But obviously, with your lower rate of climb compared to those, you do have to take some time just to set up a little bit and hopefully attempt to boom and zoom or just aim for the pilot on them or even their engine, because their engines are also quite fragile. So you really do have to play a bit smart when dealing with those, but otherwise you can mostly deal with the, the enemy aircraft that you're going to come across. However, if we go over to the Hawk 3 in China, you'll notice it's a bit of a different engine. As I said, the Hawk 3 is a later production model of the Ghost Hawk, and of course with that comes a better engine, which we do have war emergency power on this, and of course a different engine in terms of its name and everything. But obviously the raw power at the box without WEP is the same as the one in the US tech tree. But of course this has access to WEP which gives it an extra 101 horsepower. That extra 100 horsepower really does help a lot. And you're going to feel it when you go from this to this. Because I certainly did. If you don't have the Hawk 3 you won't feel the difference because obviously you're not going to notice that. But as someone who owns both the Hawk 3 and obviously now this... I do definitely feel a difference in the capabilities of this aircraft compared to the BF-2C1. So going back to the BF-2C1, they do share the same guns as the Hawk 3, with two 7.62 Browner machine guns with 600 rounds each. These are perfectly sufficient for the job. They can be a bit unwieldy against some of the more armoured aircraft that you can run into, as you're going to see in the gameplay. I was running stock belts fighting a JU-87 Stuka which took quite a bit but of course with careful aim you can still get things like fires as you will also see in the gameplay and it's more than capable of dealing with most grand targets that you're going to come across so it shouldn't really be too much of a concern for you of course there is no armor on this aircraft to talk about it does obviously make it quite fragile but that's not the problem that we obviously need to look at now if you look at the cowling of the hawk 3 and the bf2c1 ghost hawk the Hawk 3 has a slightly later cowling and also has a three-bladed propeller as opposed to a two. This means that the BF2C1's climb rate is a little bit lower and its cowling isn't as effective at stopping a couple of bullets because the earlier cowling is far more vulnerable to damage. And trust me, I know this because my very first match in this thing was where I got sniped in the engine by a Kai-10 who fired a very short burst. I mean, I did break a little bit late. But the second those bullets impacted the cowling, which if I was in the Hawk 3, it would have just done cowling damage. Yeah, my engine was toast, and I can't exactly fight two Kai-10s with 
a dead engine because that's just not happening. Another main difference between the Hawk 3 and the BF-201 Goshawk is the bomb load. So in this we have access to one 500 pounder and four 100 pounders or we can take four 100 pounders. Now of course you can see the Hawk 3 fully loaded out here. It's very effective in ground RB. However, the BF-2C1 Goshawk, with it being an earlier model, uh, does of course not have access to the 500 pounder, as you will see here. So this center pylon doesn't actually get used, it's just the 4 100s. However, 400, well, 4 100 pound bombs are more than sufficient for dealing with most targets that you're going to run into. They just require a bit more of an easier drop on target, but with the extra maneuverability, this won't be a problem. However, in terms of ground RB, I would rather take the P-26A34M2, which of course is your other reserve aircraft, not just because it has a, well, it's a bit faster, which does help out sometimes, but also it does have a 50 caliber machine gun, and trust me, this 50 cal is amazing in ground RB at 1.0. That being said though, I don't think the BF-2C1 is a bad plane. I think it's very mid in terms of reserves, and I think it was a well addition to the game. We definitely needed this. I did talk about this aircraft in a reserve replacement video where I talked about the pea shooters. I personally think they were going to axe this one, like they were going to change this, but I'm actually quite glad they did keep this because this is the easily the best pea shooter out of the lot. Because obviously it does have web, it does have a 50 cal, and it is very good. But... I definitely think you should give this plane a go if you haven't already. Of course, it does come half spaded, so you have all these modules. I believe you have the engine module, and then it's just these five here that you have to unlock. In the gameplay, I don't even have belts. I don't have the bombs, which I do get in a battle trophy after the match. And I end up finishing the match after that with no issues, to be honest. And, of course, getting the bombs after the match just helped out with the spade a little bit more. Anywho... It's time to go over to the table to take a look at the two matches it took to spade the plane. And of course, if you want to skip ahead just to the gameplay to skip the around about a minute or two minutes in the, in the table at least, please do feel free to do so. Without further ado, let's head over to the table and have a look at how this plane did. See you in a moment. And welcome to my little table. If you're new to the channel, this is typically what I do for a spade review. Obviously, this isn't exactly the finest example, but well... Reserve aircraft really do not take long to spade, and well, that's just how it is really. But, as I said, if you're new to the channel, this is typically what I do. So, when it comes to spade reviews, so in other words, a tech tree vehicle, this is something I do to really get across the point that I like to try and be honest. Because I'd rather be honest about my experience spading an aircraft than lie about it. Because, at the end of the day, I like to be genuine if I can. So what you'll notice is there's a air kills, ground kills, assist, death, and a silver lines and RP, and base bombing if needed. Of course, there is a different table for tanks, which you'll eventually see. But essentially, this is where I keep my tally, and of course, this is where you can learn about how my matches went. So, without further ado, let's have a quick look. So, battle 1 was no air kills, no ground kills, no assist, a death, 258 SL, 410 RP, I've mentioned about the Kai-10 already, and yeah, it is um, it is a, it wasn't a good match, to say the least. It was on Honolulu, which I haven't seen that map in years, and I got swarmed by Kai-10s, so not exactly a great starting point. Battle 2 is, of course, the match that you're going to be seeing today. It's only about six, seven minutes long, and it's not a bad map, or match I should say. It's 3 air kills, 16 ground, no assists, no death, 10,784 SL, 2,161 RP. Not a bad match, and was definitely a major improvement over the first match. But as I said, I don't think this is going to be meta-defining. I do think it helps out a lot for the US, but I think there's a bit more ground to be covered here. I think there's definitely more opportunities for biplanes to come into the US tech tree. Because obviously we only really have two, three if you include the premium F3F. That being the tech tree F3F and now this. I do think we need to see more of these because not only does it help out the early grind for USA, but it also teaches players a rough idea if they're starting in US of how to play the other nations with their biplanes. Obviously it doesn't teach them definitively how to play it, but you get my point. 
But anyway, without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to the gameplay now, and, well, you'll see just how easy it is to fire this thing sometimes, and you'll also see just how ineffective the guns can be, especially stock. But without further ado, I'll leave you all to it for today, and I'll see you all on the next one. Well, hello there, Mr. Dornier17. I've not had a great run in this plane so far. Well, I've only had one match in it, but, well, when you get swarmed by Kai-10s, tends, tends to happen. Could you do me a favour and uh, give me a hand with that? Thank you. Very generous of you to donate your pilot. I wasn't expecting this thing to be pretty subpar, like compare it to the Hawk 3, because obviously this has less engine power, which if you'd have skipped ahead to the gameplay, you would probably not know that, but well, you do now. The Hawk 3 is available in China as a premium. It's the starter premium you get with China. It's, it's better than this thing in a couple areas, but also it... This is a little bit lighter from what it feels, so, but the Hawk 3's engine power helps it out a little bit more. Because it can sustain turns easier. Hello, Mr. HE51. How are we doing today? You appear to be a bit combat damaged. It should make my job a little bit easier. Well, that definitely made it easier now. There goes him. So it's just a Stuka and an unknown. I think it was another Dawny, I didn't see it earlier. Nope. I know how fragile this engine is. Because it doesn't have the later cowling. Because, yeah, this also doesn't have the later cowling, so it's a little more vulnerable to engine damage. Well, that goes his. Well, there goes, I should say, his gunner. So now we should have free reign to just pelt him with 30 cal. There we go. This thing is incredibly maneuverable. Like it, it can dogfight most things really easily. Just be mindful of like anything really. Like just be mindful of both mid map AA gunners on aircraft, things like that. It, it, it is quite vulnerable to damage. Mainly the engine is what you need to be concerned about. Shoot a bit high. There we go. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, it's it's not obviously going to be meta-defining or anything. I mean, it really helps USA out in terms of reserves. But it's not bad at all. And heck, it farms like a boss for these 30 kills because there's not really much else for me to kill. And also it can carry bombs, but I don't have those a lot yet. If I did, I would be using them, like, after a reload or something, but... Because, well, there's only a Dornia 17 left, but I don't have those a lot right now because I focus mainly on the belts, which I don't have at the minute, because, well, you saw how much one went if you saw the table. The but it's not bad at all, this plane. Like, it it obviously isn't, as I said, meta-defining. It's not going to be the top dog in terms of reserves. I still think the I-15s are top dog in terms of reserves. He's annoying me. I'm just going to mute him. There we go. He, he tried to TK someone at the start of the match, by the way. I didn't record it because normally I don't record like the takeoff and stuff when it comes to getting footage for these vehicles. But yeah, he tried to TK the D500 there for no reason at all. Thankfully he didn't go for me, otherwise I'd have probably died because this thing's even more fragile than that. But yeah, this, this thing... It's not too bad. I think it would really help out in Grand RB for the reserves, but obviously the trade-off is the P26 is better in Grand RB, so that's the catch. But you've got more than enough ammo, I mean 1200 rounds, I've taken 3 kills, a load of ground targets, and I've not really had to work for it. Like, yeah, I had to deal with the, um, the Dornier 17 and aim for it properly. And obviously the Stuka did take a bit to bring down, but it's a Stuka, that's to be expected. But, well, what can I say? It's maneuverable, it's got nice handling overall, like yeah, the rod is a bit iffy, but it's an American biplane, they tend to. Let's see if I can make the match without having to go back for a reload or give the, the final blow to this twat. 
I have 44 bullets to kill an artillery piece. I don't think it's going to be enough because of stock bells. Nah, I didn't think it would be. That's unfortunate. But, there we go. Not a bad result at all. Is he really... I mean, he's level like... I think he's like level 70. He's not that smart, clearly. But, you know, that's just how it is. But there you go. Not a bad lot of result. 3 air kills, 16 ground. And we've got a box. Let's see what the box brings us. Please not what I think it'll be. No, don't even think about it. Okay, just going to give me a module. And it gave me the bomb module. Okay, so judging by the modifications research, this should be spaded now. Yes, so that is a... Well, it's not a one and done, because obviously the first match. But... That is a one and well, a two and done for the Goshawk because obviously it does come half spaded. You get most of the modules unlocked already. But in conclusion, I don't think it's that bad. I just mm, it's it's improving the U.S. reserve grind because for those that don't know, the P twenty six, A thirty three, and B thirty five these are no longer considered reserves. These are optional research vehicles. Um, because if you notice there's no arrow connecting to the P400, you do not need to research these. But, whilst I do think it's a good replacement for the P-Shooter, if only we could have the later models, but, well, they are export only, so we're not going to get that. But yeah, not a bad plane overall.